And in Martin tonight, headaches for some GO Transit riders as striking workers block access to the bus terminal at Union Station. I had to catch a subway to Highway 407. From there, I'll be catching the GO bus for the Midbigo. What commuters need to know before the start of the work week, plus. And there's sort of layers of garbage over the years that haven't been picked up. Community cleanups are back in full force after being put on hold for the pandemic, and there is a big pile of litter left behind. And how can I possibly be upset if I lose now? Like, I've already done so much. And speaking of cleaning up, you'll hear from the 23-year-old Canadian Jeopardy star, now with 14 consecutive wins. This is CBC Late Night News. Thanks for joining us. Commuters found themselves caught in the middle of an ongoing rail worker strike that saw demonstrators block Union Station bus terminal. With more on the dispute and what transit riders could face tomorrow, here's Dale Minuckduck with our top story. Cancelled. The last thing any traveler wants to see. But that was the story at Union Station today. A ghost town of a terminal. No people, few buses. I'm not sure to call my friends. They're going to pick me up and then I'm I'll say hopefully I'll be going home. Hanisha Gorley came to Toronto from Brampton on Friday. She was disappointed about the service disruption. It started yesterday when Toronto Terminal's railway workers blocked the buses in the morning. And then again after the Toronto Raptors' big playoff win with thousands leaving Scotiabank Arena. Our buses got trapped in the station. So we had uh, put a operational plan in place that saw the the buses uh, avoid Union Station bus terminal and use other points, uh, transit hubs, to drop off our customers as well as pick them up there. It was Saturday's disruption that made Metrolinx more prepared for today's action. Notices at the terminal and online were posted informing travellers, but some were still caught off guard. They are telling me that there is no bus service from Union Station to Woodbridge Go, so I have to catch a subway to Highway 407. And from there, I'll be catching the ghost bus for the Whitbigo. So I uh, should have avoided the travel today. Well, it looks like I still have an option, so it's not that bad for me. But if I didn't, I'd just grab a hotel. Metrolinx issued an apology for the inconvenience, even though the protesters aren't their employees and the transit provider has nothing to do with the labor dispute. Still, the union representing the workers took the opportunity to shame Metrolinx for deploying replacement workers and stating they'd love to be back at the bargaining table with TTR. It's unclear if they'll continue to block GO buses from Union Station, but Metrolinx says if it happens tomorrow, there will be more trains operating to ease delays. Commuters should check for updates regularly. Dale Minuckduck, CBC News, Toronto. Well, starting tomorrow, the federal government is easing some public health measures around travel. Children will see the biggest changes. Unvaccinated or partially vaccinated kids between the ages of 5 and 11 will no longer need a COVID test to enter Canada. That's on the condition they are traveling with a fully vaccinated parent or guardian. The government does say that while it is easing some restrictions, it has no plans to end vaccine mandates for travelers or change its stance on masks on planes. Also starting tomorrow, fully vaccinated travelers are no longer required to provide a quarantine plan. Well, the weather's got many people spring cleaning both inside and out. And for the first time since the start of the pandemic, a number of community cleanup crews are back in full force. As Talia Ricci shows us, they face a big job after two years worth of litter has piled up. This weekend in Toronto, spring cleaning has sprung. It's nice that I'm contributing to my community and I like ma uh, making the city cleaner. It recognizes uh, the start of with spring and summer and uh, with clean parks, everything's just so much better. Over 1,200 community cleanups with more than 55,000 volunteers happened across the city. The clean Toronto Together campaign was on hold during the pandemic, making this year's cleanup comeback even more important. It accumulates, like we're looking right now at this spot right here, and there's sort of layers of garbage over the years that haven't been picked up. An increase in visits to green spaces over the past two years also meant that more garbage was left behind. By the end of the day, we'll probably have 
three or 4,000 pounds. As the weather gets warmer, it's expected to be a busy time for the city's beaches and parks. And the city says one way you can continue to keep these spaces clean is to remember that if you have a piece of garbage to throw out in a bin like this and you can see that the bins are full, rather than putting the garbage down beside the bin, the city asks that you call 311 and let them know the bin is full or hold on to that garbage until you get to another bin. You find everything. It's more than just single-use plastics. It's pretty crazy. A couple of used bikes. We found a motorcycle. We found a lot of shopping carts. Just, it's unbelievable the, the things that are dumped into our natural environment. Thank you so much. It's amazing. Alongside the volunteer cleanups, this Community Environment Day drop-off event put on by the city aims to help reduce the amount of reusable or recyclable waste going to the landfill. I do it every year. I clean out my house. It gives uh, people a chance to recycle in a convenient way, right, without having to struggle to get rid of stuff. While Earth Day often encourages events like this, many hope the efforts continue beyond this weekend. For me, it's sort of like keeping your house clean. It actually just feels really good to know that you helped make something clean again and allow things to grow properly in our gardens and in our parks. Talia Ricci, CBC News, Toronto. Meantime, a new report out of the University of Waterloo says Canada is on track for a future of extreme heat and cities must act fast to adapt to avoid deadly consequences. Farmer Morelli shows us what can be done now to prepare. Are you all ready for tree planting? Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, excellent. At Toronto's Downsview Park, families dig in to plant 100 trees in a program led by Indigenous youth. In a very urban area like Toronto, it's very hard to kind of find, not forests, but like wilderness and areas that are like this. And um, for our group especially, it's very important to connect people to the land. But it's more than just connecting with the land. It will help the, the world, uh, the weather, the climate, yeah. Yeah, it will help the global warming. While Earth Day events bring out lots of people on a sunny day like this, a new report is shining a light on the future of extreme heat in Canadian cities. It warns of all the weather events linked to climate change, extreme heat is the deadliest. We now have to think of extreme heat in the same context of flood and fire risk. The report's author says while mitigating climate change is important, some impacts are inevitable and it's time to urgently focus on how to adapt through uh, activities like tree planting, cool roofs, painting roofs white, having cool pavements within cities. If we pursue these things aggressively, then we can have a material reduction in reference to the extreme heat felt within cities. Nearly 600 people died in BC during last year's heat dome, the deadliest extreme weather event in Canadian history. The heat dome we saw in the summer was a one in 1,000 year event, but climate change made that 150 times more likely. With that, some say the healthcare system needs to be ready too. Heat exacerbates many chronic conditions, so, you know, heart disease, lung disease, uh, kidney disease, diabetes, um, and it really affects those who are most vulnerable and marginalized the most. It terrifies me as a parent for what the future is going to be like for these kids. Back at the park, the event is more than just laying the groundwork for a better future. It's a natural thing for them to do things like plant trees and be concerned with it. It's planting awareness, too. Farah Morali, CBC News, Toronto. Premier Doug Ford was in Huntsville today announcing a $14 million investment to expand health care in cottage country. Coco Algonquin Healthcare not only serves the more than 60,000 year-round residents, but each summer, that population more than doubles. I, I, actually, I'd probably say it even triples as Ontarians and visitors to our province come to enjoy our spectacular cottage country. The province says the funding will be used for planning for the redevelopment of two hospitals in the region, Huntsville District Memorial and South Muskoka Memorial. The government says the funding would help create more patient beds and boost services. In well, meantime, official opposition NDP leader Andrea Horvath is expected to make a major campaign announcement tomorrow, although the official campaign period hasn't started just yet. Ontarians will be headed to the polls in early June. Earlier today, a walk to honour those who have died on the job and raise awareness about workplace safety. 
So I lost my father back in 2009 to a workplace fatality. Um, and we were introduced to Threads of Life through uh, my mom, actually. And I got involved just quickly after through the Speakers Bureau. Uh, so that way I could share my story and put more awareness towards workplace uh, safety. Threads for Life organized a five-kilometer walk called Steps for Life at Coronation Park this morning. The group says three workers die on the job every day in Canada. Money raised will support families affected by workplace injuries, illnesses and deaths. The event has drawn in more than $80,000, but nationally, Threads for Life says they have raised more than half a million dollars. Today's walk was the first of 28 happening this year across Canada. Well, the celebration of Vasaki and Kelsa Day were on full display in Nathan, Nathan Phillips Square in Toronto today. Today we are celebrating the 323rd day when the Sikhs were baptized by our 10th Guru. This is our 44th annual uh, celebration that, been, that been, we have been holding since 1978. Kalsa Day is a very important day in a Sikh's life and uh, this is the day we come together and, see, and we celebrate with our rest of the communities. For many, it just felt so good to be together after many in-person events have been cancelled over the last two years. There is usually a big parade, but that was put on hold again this year. April is Sikh Heritage Month. There were traditional prayers and music and food offered through the day. Victoria Fenn Alvarado is here with our first look at the forecast. You promised us a sunny Sunday, and boy, did it deliver today. It was so lovely. Oh, I was really happy about that. I hope you all got to enjoy outside, too. I mean, it, we actually got to 26 degrees in Windsor, which is the highest recorded temperature just this year. So that was a milestone in itself. Now, leading into, uh, I mean, right now, now we are above in the double digits right now and we do have some thunderstorm energy that's capable but hopefully by later on you should be asleep by then by the morning though a perfect morning to go for a walk 13 degrees but we do have some rain on the way 20 degrees in Toronto if we do get to 20 degrees it's going to be the first day that we reach 20 degrees in uh, in Toronto just this year so I'm hoping for that milestone just like Windsor got but yep Rain is on the way. I'll talk more about it in your long range forecast and some cooler conditions too. <laughs> Not excited. <laughs> okay, thanks, Victoria. We'll see you shortly. I'll see you shortly, yeah. Earlier this weekend, a group of volunteers got together to prepare and deliver cultural me meals to queer and trans Muslims throughout the GTA for free. We were there as they spent the day getting ready to head out. The organizer tells us how the program is making a difference. So Queer Muslim Network is a grassroots organization that serves queer and trans Muslims um, all across Toronto and the GTA. I'm so excited they're here today. They reached out as they needed some rental space to do what they're doing today. And um, as a openly and proud queer owned and operated company, we were happy to have them and um, allow them to use the kitchen today. I'm meeting so many people that I've never met and uh, we're all like working towards sort of making this food together. It's just a really fun time as well, you know? I think it's really important because in the Muslim community, it's often, we're often told that um, you're not allowed to be queer or trans, and a lot of people get shamed or stigmatized for being queer and trans in the Muslim community. And I really just wanted to be, bring people together and show them that they're not alone and that queer and trans people in the Muslim community have always existed and we will continue to exist. And this is like something that we really all clearly value, and this is all something that is like a big part of us. We basically put out a call out on our Instagram page for queer and trans Muslims all across the GTA who are interested in receiving a meal. Um, and they're going to be, they gave us our, their address, their dietary restrictions, and we're going to be giving it to several different queer and trans Muslims. We've got queer families in the city here and any way we can support and, um, you know, bolster these folks, the better. So we're happy to have them. Welcome back. A Ukrainian official says the U.S. Defense Secretary and Secretary of State met with the country's president in person tonight, the highest ranking American delegation to do so since Russia's invasion began. As David Common shows us today, Ukrainians spent Orthodox Easter 
praying for peace. As Ukraine celebrates Easter, there is a craving for normalcy. But the signs of war abound. Holy statues cushioned against attack. Doves of peace mingling with spent weapons and images of the dead. Among the young families, few fathers. Two months to the day since the conflict erupted, they are needed in battle instead. Russia continues to pound Ukrainian targets, but its soldiers have only gained minimal ground, repelled by Western donated weapons in the hands of Ukrainian defenders. Civilian buildings have been hit through the weekend, this strike in Odessa, killing at least eight, including a young mom and her daughter. In Mariupol, Russian-backed forces handed out food, accepted by people who those same forces had surrounded and starved for nearly two months. The warring nations marked Easter this weekend. Vladimir Putin seen praying, the Russian Orthodox Church, a strong backer of his invasion. In Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky appeared in a highly produced and defiant video. You can destroy walls, he says, but you can't break the foundation of the spirit. Hope is far from lost. This Easter picnic for dozens among the 12 million who fled their homes. I miss Sonia, my cat, five-year-old Kira tells us. She and her parents normally live just 50 kilometers from the Russian border. They've been forced out. I was walking the street and the bombing began. Liza Klemenkova was home alone when the war began. She's now living in a hostel, far from everyone she knows. It's uh, quite difficult to understand that I had a life in my city and I don't have this life now. Easter may be a time of rebirth, but Ukraine is fighting for its life. Still, there can be joy here and hope this will end somehow soon. David Common, CBC News, Lviv. Meantime, the president of France keeps his job after being re-elected tonight. Supporters cheering on Emmanuel Macron, he acknowledged others voted for him simply to block his far-right challenger, Marine Le Pen. He addressed critics who say his policies have hurt low- and middle-income earners. He vowed tonight no one would be left behind. The rate of abstaining voters was the highest since 1969. There is just no stopping Canadian Matea Roach. The 23-year-old has been cleaning up on Jeopardy. And on Friday, she earned the eighth longest streak in the show's regular season history with 14 consecutive wins. Look at that, $34,000 more for you today and a 14-day total of $320,081. So that brings her total earnings so far in Canadian cash to $407,000. We talked to her today about the winning streak, and she says every additional win has been gravy on top of gravy on top of gravy. When you've already won so much, like obviously the stakes are still very high, but you know that if you lose, you're still going home having accomplished something really incredible. And so in that sense, like, I didn't feel a real fear of losing anymore past a certain point because I was like, well, how can I possibly be upset if I lose now? Like, I've already done so much. She admits all the attention has started a bit that of a turf war between her hometown in Halifax and her current home in Toronto, both wanting to claim her as a homegrown talent either way. Roach has qualified for the Tournament of Champions this fall, where she'll face some of the show's most successful players. Well, as the weather continues to warm up, we are getting closer to cherry blossom season. This year marks the 10th anniversary of the end of the Sakura project, where more than 3,000 Japanese flowering cherry trees were planted across the province as a symbol of friendship between Japan and Canada. To welcome in the season, Japanese retailer Muji hosted a cherry blossom-themed community market. Take a look. Uh, this is our very first event like this uh, uh, since pandemic started. 
you know, some of the uh, vendors don't have physical stores. Uh, some of them only have online stores, uh, so they don't really have uh, opportunity to connect with customers, talk to the customers directly. So uh, that's one of the uh, um, reason we're doing to give them, uh, you know, like a space uh, and then opportunity for them to talk directly to the customers. Uh, Cherry Blossom, uh, the uh, Consulate General of Japan contacted us and then informed us uh, this is the uh, 10th anniversary of uh, Sakura uh, project where uh, 3,000 uh, Sakura uh, Cherry Blossom trees were planted throughout the Ontario. We sell uh, handmade ceramics and also uh, plants. Spring, um, it's actually one of my favorite seasons and I love cherry blossom, sakura. When I was in Japan, of course, I went to, you know, do a picnic and party underneath the, um, all the cherry blossom. So it's a great memory. I, I love spring, especially when the cherry blossoms are blooming. I can't wait to see that. Victoria is back and you're warning us about a bit of a dip coming. Yeah, did you put away your winter jacket yet? I did, actually. <laughs> you might need to take it back oh out. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, we do have some rain on the way first, so you have some time to pull out the winter jacket beforehand. But definitely some rain in for your Monday. For your Monday morning commute, light showers, but then by the evening commute, widespread washout across southern Ontario. Now, as we head into Tuesday, see this blue? Yes, that is snow. We are indicating some flakes could be flying, but I don't want to fear any of you. It's not going to accumulate on the ground. But what is fearful is these temperatures on Wednesday dropping to five degrees. We go from 20 degrees to five degrees. So your body is going to be all confused. It's just spring once again fooling us. Tuesday, 10 degrees though. So we do have those double digits and then by Wednesday dropping to five degrees. In fact, some places like London, two degrees is going to be as cold as the Arctic Circle. So like I mentioned, keep the warm clothes out just for that day. But then by Friday and Thursday, we get a bump up eight degrees on Thursday and by Friday, 12 degrees. So we do look up later on in the week, but you just got to get through Wednesday. Just get through that one day and then you're good later on. <laughs> And it looks like we'll get some sunshine too after that. So something to look forward to. Finally sunshine. <laughs> yes. Thanks, Victoria. Have a great night. Thank you. You too. That is our show for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again next weekend.